This, my friends, is unique to Christianity. Jesus is not simply some distant, far-off, absentee savior, but he desires intimate relationship with you. I hope you're grateful in knowing that the God of Scripture, the God that we worship, is both transcendent, meaning he's above his creation, and he is imminent, meaning that he is intimately involved in his creation and desires personal relationship with you and me. How many are grateful for that, that we are not just worshiping a Savior whose teachings have been preserved through the annals of history, but we are worshiping the Savior who says, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so he asked the question. Now, this is a plural you. So he's asking the disciples, his most intimate friends. But as Peter is known for, he speaks up. I don't know if he was the designated spokesman of the group, but he was always the impetuous one who decided that he was going to be the spokesman for the group. Anybody know a Peter out there? Anybody is a Peter out there? If you're sitting next to Peter, don't say amen. They will get you later. But Peter spoke up. But I'm so glad in this case that he did, because in this case, he got it pitched perfect. He got the ball in the hole. He got this one right. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. A two-fold answer. First, let's camp out here for just a moment because it is the most important place for us to camp out. First, you are the Christ. Now, this is an Old Testament allusion to the promise of the Messiah that was to come again. Deuteronomy 18, Moses says, There is one like unto me, but even greater, who will come. Him you must listen to. Moses was the great deliverer, prophet of Israel. And Jesus comes as the deliverer, not just a deliverer, the deliverer. Israel was longing for a deliverer. He had come to rescue men from their sins. Israel had been waiting for a savior king who they had been told was to come. And Jesus fits the bill, he fits the description of that Savior King. Let me just give you a flavor for this in Isaiah chapter 9. Keep your finger there. If you have your apps, go to Isaiah chapter 9. And this is what will most of us be familiar as a Christmas passage in verse number 6. But it's so much more than just a Christmas passage. Look at what Isaiah predicts, what he prophesies, what he says, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.